Oh, it's good to see you again. How's it going, guys? Welcome to Hearthstone. For those of you who don't know, uh, Hearthstone is Blizzard's, the same people who make WoW, Diablo, StarCraft, stuff like that. Um, this is their trading card game, essentially. Uh, it's on the computer, obviously. And it's kind of like Magic the Gathering for anyone who's ever played that game. But uh, I wanted to make this video because I was in the beta, and I am a longtime card game player. I come from Magic back in the day, and uh, I really love card games. And I figured that this is a good gateway game for people who haven't played card games yet and would like to maybe get into that. And it's still fun enough and able to be played to a level where people who already play games, like people who are coming from Magic, uh, your Yu-Gi-Oh, your uh, whatever card game you play, you'll still have fun. Because I was playing Magic the Gathering kind of kind of competitively, and this game is a lot of fun for me. Um, just on how diverse it is based on uh, some of the mechanics in the game. But what I wanted to do for this episode is I wanted to bring you against an AI match and kind of just break the game down for you for people who are new, so you can get a feel for it, and when the game comes out, maybe you can be a little more well-versed uh, after watching this video and any videos I make in the future. So let's go ahead and start with the title screen. You have your play mode, your practice mode, and the arena. Uh, play is obviously play against another player. Practice is where you play against AI. But the arena is something that people who don't play card games won't understand. And basically what you do in traditional card games, you can do something called draft. Um, I don't know if all card games do this, but I know it was a big deal in Magic. And in draft, you have three booster packs. And what you do in a draft tournament is you sit at the table with a group of people. Uh, let's say there's 50 people there. You split them up into groups of five, I guess. And everybody has three booster packs. You open, everybody opens their first booster pack, takes one of the cards out, and passes it to the right. Then the cards you got from your person on your left, you take another card out. And then you keep doing that until all the cards are taken. And then you build a deck with these random cards that you got. Uh, meanwhile, you were trying to maybe forge some kind of an idea. But really, it comes down to uh, luck of the draw. What the person next to you is building so he doesn't take it. And really going for value in the card itself as opposed to a deck plan as a whole. But uh, I'm going to get into that later because Arena is definitely more difficult to start than Constructed. Constructed being, you take a deck, you build it, just how you want it, all the cards you have, and you go play. Um, speaking of Constructed, Hearthstone runs on 30 card decks, but let's go into practice. Actually, before I do that, I'll show you what this is down here. Um, the quest log is once a day. You get little quests, and by doing these specific objectives, you gain gold. And gold is how you get into the Arena or buy booster packs, stuff like that. So let's go into practice. And those are my custom decks, but here you'll see you have the basic decks. And these decks are uh, starter decks you could think about. And for anyone who's played WoW, you have your nine classes. There's actually 10 classes in, now, in or 11, because uh, you have Monk and Death Knight, I believe. But these are your traditional WoW classes. You have your Warlock, your Mage, your Priest, your Druid, your Hunter, your Paladin, your Warrior, your Shaman, and your Rogue. And they all have what's called a Hero Power. Um, if you look over here, the Hunter that I'm moused over right now, his Hero Power is for two mana, once a turn, you can deal two damage to the enemy hero. On another note, the Priest's Hero Power is pay two mana, restore two health. The Warrior's is pay two mana, gain two armor, stuff like that. So you have these these cool little hero powers that make each class unique, as well as sets of cards that only that class can use. Um, quick rundown on the classes, your warrior is going to be using weapons, gaining armor, having creatures, and uh, beating enemies and enemies monsters with, or uh, they're called minions in this game, enemies minions with weapons. Um, your hero itself, you would think of yourself as a player with an ability, but your hero can attack. If you put a weapon on your warrior, it has a durability of two, which means you can attack with it twice, and it does set number of damage. Um, shamans summon totems and are spellcasters. Uh, you have your hero power is pay two to summon a random totem, and 
There are four you can choose from that I'll go in-depth with later. I may do one for each class's starter, get, starter deck, so you can get a feel for how the deck is supposed to work and maybe get an idea where to go from there. Uh, the rogue can equip a 1-2 dagger. Rogues uh, are also another melee class, but they do have some, some useful spells just like the warrior does. Paladin is going to be uh, reinforced as his hero power, 2 mana for a 1-1 dude. Um, you might think, for people who know card games, this is very indicative of what you would call a weenie deck, making a bunch of little dudes and buffing them up, because you don't have to spend cards to get dudes. You can just pay 2 mana and get a 1-1, which is nice. Uh, the Hunter is a creature-oriented deck with some removal spells in there. The Druid is one of the few classes, it may be the only class currently, who can accelerate the game. Uh, there's a normal pace to the game, and Druids have cards that let them accelerate by spending mana now, they get more mana later. Uh, Warlocks have an interesting ability. It's pay two mana, and then you get to draw an extra card and take two damage, which is really nice. Uh, they're spellcasters, of course, and uh, they have very strong cards with drawbacks. Like they have a four, a four attack, three toughness creature for two mana, which is really good. But when you cast it, you have to discard a card at random. Uh, they have a zero cost four damage spell, discard a card at random, stuff like that. So it, it balances out their power with negative side effects, but you can you can make a deck and play around that and use it to your advantage. Uh, mages are your generic spell, I say generic, it's the wrong word, your vanilla spellcaster. They have fireballs and frost bolts and blizzards and they can turn things into sheep and their power is just pay two mana, throw a fire blast at something. And then priests are spellcasters with uh, interesting minion uh, interactions that I'll go into later. But let's choose, let's see, what do we want to play? Let's start with a simpler one so uh, I can just talk about the game. Let's go for the Paladin. That seems good. You can't gain any experience past level 10 by playing against the eye. Okay. Um, another thing I should go into is you see my Hunter, oops, you see my Hunter is at level 5, my Priest is at level 29, my Shaman's at level 15. Once you hit level 10, you unlock the basic cards for that deck. See, I have all the priest, un cards, priest cards unlocked, all the shaman cards unlocked. I don't play Hunter, so I don't have any of his cards unlocked. But uh, every two levels, you get two basic cards. Or, no, it's, it's either every level or every other level, I can't remember. And then every level after that, or every two levels after that, you start unlocking the gold versions of those cards, which are basically just like foils or holographics for anyone who knows what that is. So let's go with the Paladin. Um, it's just letting me know that I'm not going to get any experience. And let's go against a druid. Now I'm just going to use the vanilla paladin deck to show you basically the mechanics of the game and stuff like that. Here's the little loading screen. Alright, so Uther Lightbringer is the paladin and Malfurion Storm Rage for anyone who plays WoW is the druid. Now since we're going second, we get an extra card. And another card that I'll show you in a minute. Um, so this is a pretty good opening hand. This is kind of expensive, so I'm going to throw this back. And this is how you mulligan your hand. You click the card you don't want, and then you hit confirm. I like these three, so I'm going to throw this one back because it, uh, it is expensive. And we'll not see any play. So that's a much better card to have in my hand. And when you go second, because you'll see he has a mana now, and I don't, it gives me this, uh, this coin to make up for that advantage at least one time. So if we look at the board, we have the play area here, which is where you place your minions and where all the effects happen. We have our respective hero powers here. Our deck is over here, and our health is right here. If you look at the top of each card, it has a mana cost at the top left, it has an attack at the bottom left, and it has a health at the bottom right. Battle Cry means does something when it comes when you play it from your hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Elvish Archer, we're going to click on her, bring her down here, and then it's asking me where I want to direct her Battle Cry effect. If I don't want to, I can click back on her and pick it back up. But we do want to do that, so we're going to go ahead and drop the Elvish Archer, and we're going to target this minion right here. We could target him, but I'd much rather kill this. So we're going to bap, just like that. And while he takes his turn, I'm going to explain the mana system. Um, I should end my turn. Every turn, you get one more mana. So you'll notice he has two mana this turn, and he decided to use his hero power. He's probably going to kill this. 
Yep. And he got an armor, so he took no damage. But uh, the mana system in this game is you get one mana per turn. See, now I have two mana. And now I have two mana to spend for this turn. So I can go, this costs two. Or what I could do, if, if I wanted to, I can use the coin, gain an extra mana crystal for this one turn, and you see it costs zero. And then I could play my three drop. Or this guy, deal of damage. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save my, uh, my coin for later. going to go ahead and play this novice engineer. And when it comes into play, I get to draw a card. Pretty good. Gonna go ahead and pass the turn there. Gonna use hero power again, and he's probably gonna hit me, I would imagine. Yeah. So druids, they're usually kind of beat downy, just throwing a bunch of dudes at you, or they're more stalled till the late game and play giant scary creatures. So what I'm going to do here is if you look at this guy right here, the raid leader, he's a 3 mana 2-2 two, two that says my other minions have plus 1 attack. So by playing this guy, you'll see Novice Engineer's attack just went up by 1. And uh, another interesting thing I should state is that their health, this, uh, this card has 2 health. If it takes a damage, it now has 1 health until I heal it or it dies. Uh, cards don't regenerate health at the end of the turn like in some other games. So I'm going to give this a buff and I'm going to go ahead and smack it right there. And you'll see how these little guys are going to start to become a problem really quickly. So he's trying to get this out of the way, which is a good idea. He should do that. And then he's probably going to trade there. Yeah, that was a smart idea on his part because not only did he kill a 2-2, but he took the buff away from this creature. So instead of doing 4 damage next turn, I'm doing 1 damage next turn. Or so he thought. But what I can do this turn is I can drop my raid leader. Then I can use the coin to get an additional mana and make another guy. So now I've got three people, or three minions with two attack. And next turn if he doesn't handle that he's going to have an issue. Hero power. He's probably going to kill this. That's what I would do in that situation. Oh, he's going to go for that and he probably has another boar. Or something to get through for one damage. Nope, he must have a shitty hand. <laughs> so what we're going to do in this situation is I'm going to play the Gnomish Inventor just to draw another card. And then I'm going to use that one more mana to give a minion Divine Shield. And what Divine Shield means is that, uh, or it says right there, the first time a shielded minion takes damage, ignore it. So now, if he wants to kill this guy, he's going to have to hit him twice. So now all our guys can attack. Let's go ahead and beat some damage in there. And you'll see that his life is just going down. Um, okay, I'm glad I was just thinking about that. I'm glad he played that. S Innervate, zero mana for two mana. So he spent a card to get two mana. And he's probably going to bop this. Yeah, figures. Now, he played Lord of the Arena. And, oh, get out of the way. Lord of the Arena is a six mana, six five with taunt. And you noticed how I was attacking oh, sure. over his head like that? Whenever a creature has taunt, you have to attack creatures with taunt before you can attack other minions or the player. So until I handle this 6-5, I can't do anything to him. Luckily, I can trade his 6 mana card for my 4 mana card. And that's what's called card advantage. This Gnomish Inventor has drawn me a card and he's trading up to kill another creature. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Stormpike Commander, and when he comes into play, he deals two damage to something. So we're going to take this, we're going to deal two damage to Lord of the Arena, and then we're going to trade this card here. What we could do is we could give the Gnomish Inventor Divine Shield, and then attack there. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to give this minion Divine Shield, because he's more important than that card is to me. Because he's the only reason this is scary. Well, it's a little scary with these two cards in play, but uh, the deck kind of revolves around little buffs. So we're going to go ahead and trade here. Trade that 4-drop card for a 6-drop card, which is good for me. And then I'm just going to keep beating in his face. Another Lord of the Arena, that's okay. So we can trade this 5-drop for this 6-drop, and I'm wondering... Hmm... Let's see. 
I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to go ahead and... Yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and... Stormforge Rifleman. We're going to go ahead and... Shoot over the Lord of the Arena. And you can target them with spells when they have a creature with taunt. You just can't attack them with minions. So keep that in mind. If I had a spell that did direct damage... Like, let's say I, sp I had a spell that did 11 damage. I could cast it and just go right over the minion's head and kill it. But I don't. So, uh, actually what I should have done... I could have played that differently, and I'll explain how. I could have played the Iron Forge Rifleman, hit him for one. Played my Elvis Archer, hit him for one, and then... I oh, don't know, I guess I don't want to take damage. See, actually I'm going to show you an example. If I take this Light's Justice... This is a weapon. If I equip it to my character like that, it do, it can deal one attack four times. If I attack this minion, I can deal a damage to it, but it deals its attack to me as well. So I just took six damage to hit that for one, which uh, is not good. But we're going to go ahead and trade this away. Then we're going to make a guy and play a guy. Shoot him in the face for one. There we go. And uh, you might notice these little guys that I play this turn can't attack because they've been played this turn. The exception to that rule are minions with charge. Charge means they can attack the turn they come into play. And he has one more guy with taunt, but it won't be enough. He's going to pop me for three, but that's okay. Then he's going to pass the turn, and we're going to win because I'm going to... How do I want to do this? Let's deal a damage to this. I took one damage, that's okay. Then we're going to deal use this card to three, deal three damage and draw a card. I'm going to do that. And we drew a Stormwind Champion, which would be the finisher for this deck, uh, this starter deck. If I, if I didn't have to do that to draw that card, I would have played Stormwind Champion, and all of my minions would have got plus one, plus one, and you'd have taken two, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen, plus... 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. He would have taken 19 damage, which is most of his life. So that would have been the good play here. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and swing in there like that. And that is game. Victory. You see we got some experience. And normally in play mode, uh, if you were playing actual people, every three wins, you would get 10 gold. And uh, that's one of the ways you can gather up gold to buy packs to enter the arena, stuff like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, let me know what you thought. I'm Aaron, and I'll see you next time.